Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. His name is God. His name is called His name is called Hallelujah Hallelujah And they said is Saul also a prophet This ordinary man we know called the son of Kish what suddenly happened to him that he began to prophesy from morning till night is Saul also a prophet he said i have found my servant david and with my holy oil i have anointed him hallelujah he told jeremiah from when you were in your mother's womb i called you i ordained you to be a prophet he said jeremiah don't say i am small i have put my word in your mouth and he will subdue kingdoms he will tear down the Bible says these people will be called the repairers of the breach. They will fix the broken walls and the desolations of many generations. This is what God is doing. There is a revolution. He says, I will build my church. Not a church. Not their church. Many people can build their church, but I will build my my church according to a heavenly pattern and he told moses he said ensure that you build according to pattern bible says every house is built by some man but god is the builder of all things worthy worthy is the lamb Worthy, worthy is the Lamb, worthy, worthy is the Lamb, holy, holy is the Lamb, holy.
take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. It's a powerful song. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Breathe on me. Yeah. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. It is the breath of the Almighty that make men of understanding. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Affect my life, breathe on me. I live to you for Affect my life, breathe on me. Sing it from your heart. Lord, affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. One more time. I thank my life. Breathe on me. I look to you for life. I thank my life. Breathe on me. I look to you for life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Expression of desperation.
Thank you, Jesus. Healings are already taking place in the spirit. I sense a very strong healing anointing in this place. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and it healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord. The Lord is healing sick bodies right now. That he led thee. I am the Lord. I'm your healer. I, I sent my word and it had it healed your disease. But welcome me. I tell you, the Holy Spirit is resting, is finding habitation. Father, have mercy and grace. Spirit takes over your soul. When the Spirit takes over your soul, you will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul for he's the Holy Ghost Spirit of the living God he's the Holy Ghost scepter of the King of Kings you're the Holy Holy Ghost, seal of the age to come. You're changing everything. And I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy I will see of the wonders of your work and I will forever sing your praise I will forever wonders of your word and I will forever see your grace thank you Jesus thank you 
the way God has been interrupting our services through the week we are in strange seasons of the glory because God is opening portals God is opening scrolls showing us the mysteries of the kingdom Hallelujah Hallelujah I'm not just singing this is a sound from heaven Hallelujah Hallelujah May you hear this sound in your spirit Ale, 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 And I prophesied as I was commanded. Hallelujah. Please follow me instrumentally. I'm not singing. It's a chant in the spirit. Hallelujah. Ride upon the wings of this sound, O great one. See now, I shake na 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 na. See na 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 na. Ride upon the wings of this sound. Echo in your spirit, man. For when the shofar blows, it's a sign that the season has a dimension of God that the church has lost the meeting point between men and the presence of God Emmanuel and the church will see your holy face Emmanuel when you come Hallelujah You have won the victory Sikata baba kala bada da 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 Hallelujah you have won it all for me. Just that part, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You want it all for me. 
blessed rain above all, above all, your kingdom reign. sure you participate in the worship it's part of the teaching the presence of God is happy and mighty in this place This is the part of the song that I like. of your presence oh God there is a strange wind physical wind physical wind that I see in the spirit and it's going to blow inside this place a real physical wind you will feel it start happening right now a real wind is the wind of the spirit a real physical wind physical wind blow oh great wind even as I've seen in the spirit a real physical wind. Changing. Transforming. I don't mind waiting. We're not in a hurry. I don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting. 
For who is there like you? There's no one beside you. I lead the earth to worship you. Who is there like you? There's no one beside you. I lead the earth. Look, the Lord is doing something tonight. Let's just flow with what the Holy Spirit is doing. Who is there like you? There's no one beside you. I lead the earth to worship you. Who is there like you? There's no one beside you. I lead the earth. I lead the earth to worship you. Jesus. This is what this is all about. And we give you the glory. We thank you for your mighty presence. We thank you for the miracles. For the healings. Thank you because you're already changing the mindsets of people. Doing what mortal words cannot articulate. Jesus. Something special. Supernatural. About the name. Something happens when we call his name. Something happens when I mention your name. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we submit to what you are doing. I will praise the Lamb. Of God who sits upon the throne. Sam, help me. I, I will worship him and give, and give a praise, praise to, to him, him alone. alone. He who was and is and is to come, I will sing before, before his throne forever. And they bow down and they sing holy. Yes, we sing holy. And we, your sons and daughters, we praise you now and we cry holy. Yes, we cry. Holy. I will praise the Lamb. I will praise the Lamb of God, God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him. I will worship Him and give the praise to Him alone. He who was in the earth. Hallelujah. Everybody raise. 
raise your voice and sing there's no one like you lord there's no one like you lord no one can compare to you separate and sanctify what are your for the praise and what are your glory God we will bow before you and raise your voice and say she is so holy somebody wants to be Lord, if this is all you do with us tonight, we are grateful. There is only so much we know about the presence of God and its power to change. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Bless us, O oh God, tonight. We're not ashamed to bask in your presence. This is the place of true power. This is the place where burdens are lifted. This is where you are separating men. worship him your flesh may be weak but there is an ascendance that is happening to your spirit sing hallelujah 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 Despite to the Lord and say, I'm available. Lord, I'm available. Pray it. Turn it to, into a, a solemn prayer. You're with Him alone tonight. I know we are here corporately. I'm truly available. Even if this is your first time tonight. This is how to walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me tell you what happens to you when you are exposed to God's presence. Your flesh will start fighting you. Your mortal physical body we start finding excuses as to why you are tired. It's because something is happening. Many of us have not mastered the art of taming the flesh to stay in the presence of God. 
once you raise a worship song you suddenly begin to feel i'm tired i need to I, i'm looking for something it's not like you're really tired brothers and sisters no flesh can stand in his presence when your flesh is compelled to submit to the influence of his presence you will become a wonder his power can flow through you the energy the ability of the spirit you don't just need a transformation of the mind you need a total alignment an alignment where something happens to you not just in your spirit not just in your soul but your physical body your physical body when you bask in the glory of God I'm telling you it affects your physical body your mortal body every fiber of your cell every fiber of your blood your body comes under the influence of that cupboard that weight of his glory that's what will melt every sickness that's what will set people free hallelujah please be seated good evening and god bless you if you can sit down if you cannot the meeting is already on i love to worship and i love to praise i bow before you lifting you i i worship your holy name i love to worship i love to praise i bow before you lifting you i You are being renewed. Listen to me, please. You are being changed. These seats are vacant. Can we have one or two people occupy these seats, please? Hallelujah. Please fill up every vacant seat. Just come quietly, find a place and sit. God bless all of you standing. You may be standing now, but I assure you, a day will come you will sit. Yeah, the Bible says the word is able to give you an inheritance. Lord, if you're healing people in this season, don't do it without me. Mali Paradashia. Don't do it without me. Oh Lord, if you're changing cities in this season, please don't do it without me. That's always my prayer. Don't do it without me. Oh Lord, as you're leading people into your glory don't do without me don't do it without me hallelujah see listen if you take seriously the things i'm teaching you it will shock you what you will become it's a programming. Listen to me. What you are receiving is a programming. It's making you become something. It's aligning you spiritually so that the reality of the kingdom can find expression through you. This is what God desires. Not just when you are standing on stage. Hallelujah. There is an alignment through the songs even if you don't hear anything the atmosphere does something to you 
there is a change the presence of God this is the factor that you need in your life brothers and sisters power is not enough to change people there is there is a way you can align to the Holy Ghost that you become a living wonder your physical mortal body carries heaven hallelujah and that everywhere you go you become an envoy i did a teaching envoys of his presence you don't have all the time to start teaching people sermons brothers and sisters there are times you will need to let the presence alone speak Oh, 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 oh. He has become our passion in this place. It pays to walk with God. It pays. God is speaking to someone here. Tonight, you need to win the war in your heart and give up the flesh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to make an altar call right now. Hallelujah. There are people who have been fighting to submit totally to the Spirit. And he's giving the devil access to destroy your life. You know what I'm talking about. There are so many of you outside. There are many of us inside. Hallelujah. This is what is keeping many of us in bondages. This is what gives the devil legal access. Tonight. Tonight. I'm going to make an altar call right now. Even before I continue. Don't mind what I'm doing. Let me just do my stupid thing on the stage. This is the Holy Ghost doing what he's doing. This is koinonia. Hallelujah. There are people who need to win this war tonight. The struggle is over. You, you can't keep fighting with destiny forever. You may be sitting and people may be looking at you, but we are struggling. There is this war between Cain and Abel. The spirit and the flesh. Hallelujah. As I count three, I want those people to get up, jump up on your feet and come out here right now. One. Lord, if you're healing people in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Please, if you are not sure why you are here, go back to your seat and think again. Please, we are not, we are not playing games. We are really, look at me, hold on. Praise God. I, I appreciate your sincerity, but we are not playing games. If you are coming out here, you are really telling the Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired. Win this war tonight. I make up my mind for real. Hallelujah. Just come, there's still some space. I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. Lord, I will bow. Lord, I will bow to you. Listen, Jesus said something. He said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything. Satan cometh to me. Many of us, it's not that we don't love God. This has been my message. He is not a priority. There are so many things we believe that deserve our time and our attention. Because we live in a society that convinces us that spirituality makes us failure. Who can compare to you? 
Great is the measure of your royalty, O morning star, you truly are everything. Listen, look at me, those of you coming out. You can win this war tonight and say, Lord, take over my life. Take over. I don't care who is watching me. I'm, I'm sick and tired of this fake life. There are many of you who are supposed to join them. You are sitting smiling and the Holy Ghost is talking to you and saying, this is serious business. Join them quickly. There are many of you outside. Lord, you are everything to me. Is my treasure, my priority? Who can compare to him? Nobody. Great is the measure of his royalty. Oh, more. You truly are Listen If that Isaac in your life That makes God of less value Does not leave you You will never experience the power of God Take it from me Don't let anybody fool you I've told you there are some things in the kingdom That are not gifts they are rewards for serious people. It's part of the justice system of heaven. For many of us, it's boyfriend and girlfriend that won't let us get serious with God. For many of us, it's money. Ah, you want money. For many of us, we are just careless and vulnerable. And it may not be your fault. We came from backgrounds where priority to the things of God is seen as being strange. But let me tell you something. When you come for koinonia, what you see is a new culture. You don't see Yoruba culture here or Hausa culture or Igbo culture or, or another culture, South-South culture. We divorce those things to pick the excellency of the culture of the kingdom. And in a kingdom, there is no democracy. The entire citizens look up to the king and his agenda. Many of you believe in God. Tonight, will you submit to his government? This is the true place of power. Take me to the place. The place you are. It's the secret place. That's where I want to be. I tell you, you will command power and authority when you stand in that realm. The place you are. The secret place. Those of you standing, can you sing it with me? Take me to the place. Come on. Take me to the place, the place you are, the place you are, the secret place. That's where I wanna be. That's where I wanna be. There are many of you that need to take your phone. Look at me, and send polite but serious text messages to certain people. And say, I've been playing with the issue of God being my priority. But right now, Mr. Man, I mean business. See, let me tell you. If you are ashamed of this, I can guarantee you, brothers and Many of our parents were ashamed of this decision. And they are paying for it bitterly. They went to school, but they are still paying. The remedy from the tragedy that comes with this system this fallen system is to walk in the spirit lift your hands those of you in front 
and cry your heart to God. Those of us seated, join them. In one minute, say, Lord, I take you seriously from today. Pray. Take away every Isaac, oh God, that will not stop me from being serious. Some of you are ashamed of the mockery that comes with carrying the cross. Man, tata, kapa, ladabagai. Pray. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. Those of you standing cry. Come on. This is between you and God. This is your koinonia tonight. Lord I know you desire to use me. But what is this weight? It says seeing then. That we are surrounded. By so great. A cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight, every weight, every weight, every weight. Take it, oh God. Take it, whatever it is, and mean it from your heart. Ladies, pray. Lord, take it away. Katabalekataya so that I can rise to a realm higher than what I have seen so that I will command the authority of the kingdom so that I will be trusted with the mysteries of the kingdom the Bible says the secrets of the Lord are not with them that are born again with them that fear him them that fear him he will show them his covenants let your Christianity last let your Christianity last. No mood swings with God. Kill it tonight. No mood swings with God. I love you whether there's money or not. I love you whether there's job or not. Come on, pray. I love you whether there's marriage or not. Children or not. Academics or not. Carryover or not. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Sing it with me. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamond. There is nothing. hallelujah our time is fast spent if this is all we do tonight no problem i wanted to teach something about the mysteries of the kingdom one of the mysteries of the kingdom is the mystery of having more in the kingdom you have more by losing what you have are you hearing what i'm saying it's a strange mystery it says whosoever loves his life will lose it but whosoever loses it you want power, lose the strength you have in yourself and you will get a higher one. You want wisdom, lose the one you have. Break it like an alabaster box and pour it on his feet and say, Lord, take the intellect. I know I went to school, but I can roll on the floor for the excellency of another. You must lose what you currently have. Otherwise, you will never get it. A higher dimension. I pray for you. Say after me, those of you standing, Lord Jesus, I mean business with you. Many of you, as you are praying, the power of the Holy Ghost will come strong upon you because this is what the Holy Ghost has been waiting for. He's been seeking you for a long time. Hallelujah. I mean business with you. I make up my mind tonight that you are my priority. I not only believe in Jesus, I submit to the government of heaven. Every Isaac in my life that stops me from rising higher, I give it tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for these ones in the name of Jesus.
they have come because they mean business with you transform them some of them are men of God some of them are women of God some of them are great leaders some of them have seen your hand in a measure I pray in the name that is above all names help them in the name of Jesus may grace to lose what you have be given to you that you will get something higher that nothing in this earth can compare with it I break every ungodly association look at me and I announce this to everybody hear me inside and outside you are not truly born again if your association does not change I'm going to repeat it you are not truly born again if your association especially the association that kept you in sin there's no such thing that I'm born again and my best friend is still that person I will change him uh -uh. when it was time for Moses to be changed he left Egypt and went and stayed with God was trained when he had that stature God sent him back to Egypt as a deliverer you don't stay in Egypt and get transformed hallelujah there are many of us you have three or four people your friends they drag a lady and they are coming to sleep with her and you are there you are a christian but you don't you don't like it but there's nothing that can be done about it and then you are in the room there you are watching you didn't sleep with the lady but a seed has been sown in your life you are going to go and pray and you are thinking of all kinds of things your spiritual stability has been distorted and it will take a long time for you to get back your footing but I pray for you tonight the hand of the almighty is upon you you will leave this place transformed please go back to your seat give me 15 minutes or so and we'll be up. and then things now God has been interrupting what we are doing in this place the message I preached last week was not even the message that I plan to preach this week again and every time you see God stepping in like that is because we're entering seasons I told us about the seasons of greatness like Noah I will keep announcing it until we step into the reality of it Noah kept saying something kept saying something and this is not just empty confession hallelujah grant us grace oh God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ can we just look at something small We're talking about the mysteries of the kingdom um, for time's sake our time is already gone I will just pick something really just an aspect of what I want to share um, and then we'll just pray I want to teach us tonight how to enforce the kingdom in our lives how to enforce the kingdom Matthew 6. Ah, Jesus inspires me. Goodness. I began to read this, the parables of Jesus. And I mean, those parables were just hitting me like arrows with mysteries. Hallelujah. If you're ever caught up to heaven or the realm of the spirit, and you ever see God or angels the proof that you truly saw God or anything divine 
is that you will return with more questions than the answers you got. You will come back with a lot of information. But you will come back so confused. Your dependence in the Holy Spirit will increase as a matter of life and death. Because of the mysteries. Brothers and sisters, this kingdom is a kingdom of mysteries. I shared with us already that a mystery is a secret truth. A mystery is a hidden truth. Hidden truth. Hidden truth. There are some mysteries that we have to really look at. We may not, we can't touch all of them. That's to say we are reading, we are exploring the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But there are a few mysteries we have to touch. One of it is enforcing the kingdom. Maybe next week we'll discuss the mystery of marriage. Not relationship and family talk at all. The mystery of marriage. The Bible calls it a great mystery. Ephesians. That means no unbeliever can truly understand marriage. It's not about age. Anything that is a mystery is only given to the sons of the kingdom to understand. Hmm. He said it is given unto you to know the mysteries. So men can see, the Bible says, so that they seeing, they may not see, they can understand. Hearing, but they will not get it. But there is a mystery. When you understand this, you must be a good husband. The mystery of marriage. When you understand it, you must be a good wife. Whether you pick a wife from Borno and a husband from Niger Delta, no problem. A great mystery. Paul, there were few things in the Bible that Paul called a great mystery. He said, behold, I show you a mystery. And I told us last week that there are certain people by the election of grace, they are called stewards of the mysteries of God stewards stewards custodians caretakers of the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah enforcing the kingdom what is the kingdom the influence of the king what is the kingdom the summation of the value system the ideologies of the king hallelujah sorry i may have to rush i'm, I'm really really sorry enforcing the kingdom talks about reproducing the reality of the king's culture the king's culture that's the best way to put it a culture is the way of life of a people their way of operation reproducing the king's atmosphere reproducing the king's result forcing his decrees to work here and now in your life there are principles is a mystery. Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray. And he said something. Verse 6. Or let's start from verse um, chapter 6 verse 9. After this manner therefore pray ye. Our father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Verse 10 says what? Okay. It says thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Three powerful words. That sum up the desires of God for men in this system. Your kingdom. Replace that word kingdom with three words, please. You may not, if you can do it, wonderful. Number one, your culture. Number two, your principles. Number three, your influence. Culture, principle, influence. Please, all of us, listen. These teachings will make us kingdom people. This is Jesus telling the people that this is the Father's desire. Because he said, that I do nothing of my own as I see my Father. Your, what's the first word now? So, let's read it. Just in your mind, just put culture there. Are you ready? One, to read. Your culture. Lord, let your culture, that way of life that makes heaven, heaven, I want it to come. That way of life, the culture of heaven, let it come. 
Number two, the principles of heaven. That means the formula by which heaven runs its activities. Let it be transported to this realm here and now. Please follow me. Number three, your influence. What is your influence? The jurisdiction of your control. The jurisdiction of your control. Let it find expression. This is Jesus praying. This prayer was not just something that they are supposed to be praying and reciting every day. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This and that and that. And that. All those things are just games. Jesus was saying something very serious. The Bible says the spirit searches the mind of God. And in searching the mind of God, he said your culture, your principles, your influence, let it come. You see why we sing songs like your kingdom reign? Are you following me now? Enforcing the kingdom. What does it mean to enforce the kingdom? It means to align yourself so that this prayer becomes answered in your life and across your territory enforcing the culture enforcing the kingdom hallelujah now this is very very important let me have somebody one lady benga come one lady can come anybody where are you from sir you're from kogi state stand here where are you from enugu thank you one yoruba person yoruba oh yeah one house a person real house or not Katsina and or any of these people. Oh, yeah, now. People want to embarrass your people now. Now, watch this. You are from where, Oga? Katsina. Real Katsina. You are from Ondo, Kogi State. Watch this. These people represent different territories. Everybody say territory. You must understand this. I want to be very simple. I'm out of time. I know you, you may not remember what I'm saying, but you remember what I'm acting here. Are you getting my point? This lady is from the East, accustomed to the life and the culture of the East. Where the culture came from is not the issue, is that it's there now. Is that true? Are you following what I'm saying now? Uh -huh. This guy, listen, is from Kogi State, and there is a way, there is a culture, there is a life. Is that true? This lady is a Yoruba lady. Are you following me now? There is a culture. For instance, if her mother were to come here, you know how she's going to greet her, right? Is that true? This gentleman is from the north. He and his father can go, if, assuming he were not a believer, for instance, he and his father can go to the same mat and pray. And that's not disrespect. In fact, it's a sign of loyalty and commitment. Whereas in other cultures, when men are sitting down, women don't even come there. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, Jesus looks at these people with their different cultures and he says, when you pray, if you must become true citizens of the kingdom, pray that your kingdom overshadow what has been existing that has tilted the minds of the people to behave in a way that closes the spirit from finding expression. Are you getting the prayer now? And so he said, for that to happen, you must pray that your kingdom that means when you get born again as an evil lady you don't come and negotiate with god and say lord remember i'm evil i gave you my heart as evil so all through our walk where evil clashes with the kingdom you will shift for me and let's continue moving are you getting my point now the katsina person says look lord the way we do our things we are very very diplomatic about it don't bring any kingdom thing now what many believers want is that we take a culture right come into the kingdom when we come into the kingdom we now begin to enforce our culture please are you understanding what i'm saying we now begin to enforce our culture now not every aspect of culture is wrong i hope you know that but there are dangerous and devilish aspects of culture. And this culture 
was carved out by Babylon. This mystery that births and spews iniquity upon the face of the earth. So that when you keep practicing certain things, it permits the gates of hell to perpetually keep working in your life. Are you listening to me now? So, although you are born again, there are still ordinances that are holding you back. And because you are not ready to subscribe, you are a believer, but you are not ready to bend and subscribe to a higher kingdom. Are you getting my point now? But when you come into Christ, you die and let me tell you the revelation of that death to die means you cease to honor everything you honored before him that's the way of the cross are you getting my point now and when you come out from the other end you are naked the holy ghost is supposed to now begin to introduce you to a new culture supervised by the king himself not the traditional ruler in your village. That's why he himself is called the king. Many people know the savior, but they have not met the king. And let me tell you, you will never walk as an ambassador in the kingdom until you encounter the king. Because ambassadors are the envoys that represent the ideologies of the king. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? So, I come in with my culture. I even become a pastor with this culture and we carry all kinds of ideologies as we study scripture culture and the principles we have practiced now become the lens from which we judge and interpret scripture are you getting what i'm saying so it corrupts the authenticity of what the spirit is about to do that is the reason why when in Egypt, when they came out of Egypt, that's I told you, power is not enough to change people. They saw miracles, but the moment the going got tough, they said, Remember that calf that Pharaoh used to build now that helped them during one war? Aaron, come and help us. Let's help ourselves here. This maybe Moses is dead somewhere. God has killed him. You see that? Because they came out and they still brought Egypt with them. So when the going went tough, what happened? They negotiated with Egypt. It was not an Egyptian that built that calf, brothers and sisters. The same people, God's own Israel. This is how many of us are. We come out of the kingdom, but we have not left these things. This revelation, thy kingdom come, has not found expression in our lives. But when you come into the school of the spirit, the Lord now says, there is neither male nor female. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. What is the revelation of that? He's introducing you to a new kingdom that is not dependent on your gender. A new kingdom that is not dependent on your prior ideology. Swallow your pride. Tonight, come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the mysteries of eternal life. It's a little here, a little there, and soon your day will dawn. It's changing everything in obedience to Christ. When Jesus was walking, the Bible talks about a centurion, a captain in the army. He came to Jesus and he said, my son is about to die. And Jesus said, all right, I will come to him. He said, uh-uh, I know I'm a Jew. And I said, I mean, a Roman soldier, sorry. And according to the custom of the Romans, when, when, when they call you, you must come physically present. And he said, but I am a man under authority. Jesus had him speaking kingdom language. And Jesus said, I'm interested. Talk, I'm listening. He said, as a result of being under authority, I can tell one, go without coming physically and he will go. And tell another, come and Jesus say, yeah, I have not found this revelation. You, a Roman soldier, who taught you this? He said, then go. If you believe this. Brothers and sisters, your degree of 
relinquishing the hold of your own principles and adopting that of the kingdom is the degree to which you will conform to the true image of the Christ here and now. That's why all things are not possible for everybody. I told you we are one in Christ. Revelation and alignment have separated us into different cadres. One star different from another in glory. So what is possible for brother A may not be possible for brother B. Same grace, same faith, same Lord, same baptism. Different responses to that which the spirit has given. That's why he gave unto one five talents. He gave unto one two. If he gave five and five, then we'll know that it's a system that does not depend on our personal contribution. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many people who teach that we all got the same thing. No, sir. The Bible tells me he gave five. He gave two. Not according to his desire to bless them. According to their stewardship that they have proven in time past. Hallelujah. So, a time comes when Taiwo's tradition and principles limit the Holy Spirit. God takes us so far. And when it's time to climb higher that which she must lay down becomes too much can god use me i'm a lady all i want to do is just marry that revelation is limiting god like the chains held the hands of samson those two hands represented the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic they were bound and so nothing could happen because the foundation of the kingdom is built upon the apostles and the prophets. Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. But the Bible says when the spirit of God came, the first thing that happened was the chains melted. They became like flax so that it could now release the apostolic and the prophetic. And he said, give me the jawbone of an ass. That's all I need. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made them yours. The highest praise to the king. He has taken all the glory. He has taken all the praise. He has taken all dominion. He has taken all the praise. You have made them yours. Highest praise to the king. For a very long time, when he called this patriarch called Abraham, he said, Abraham, come out of your father's house. There is something in your father's house that has the capacity to limit your prophetic destiny. I know it's your father's house, but come out of it. He said, out of all your kindred and go to a land, a, a city, a mountain, a place that I will show you. And if you obey me, I will make you blessed. In Genesis 12, it was not yet at work in his life. It was the prophecy of what would happen if he obeys. And the Bible says he left. And Lot, you see that? He was told to go alone. When he looked at Lot, he said, Lot, I've been with you or you come. Amazing how we carry many things in the name of pity and they are the things that open the door for darkness at the apex of our breakthrough. Hallelujah. And Lot went with him. A time came, God said, told Abraham, look, let Lot go. What are you willing to let go? For the excellency of this new culture. Listen. The Bible says, ask for the ancient part. In the kingdom, there is no invention. Your creativity is useless in the kingdom. You are not left to create anything at all. Are you getting what I'm saying? As far as working with God is concerned, your expertise and your creativity is taking advantage of his spirit to enforce the kingdom here. But as far as your work with God is concerned, your personal initiative is not necessary. The Bible says, ask for the ancient path. It didn't say create a road and tie it. Ask for it. There is already a road. Ask for it and walk and you will find rest for your soul. 
in other words refuse to ask for it and keep struggling following roads and come and find yourself in the same spot again is someone hearing what i'm saying so god desires that regardless see this sister can never relate with benga truly and sincerely if both of them do not adopt a higher kingdom that is greater than the, are you getting my point a time will come when their personal ideologies will clash why am i entering next week already i don't want to steal into the mystery of marriage and you will know why without the adoption of the culture of the kingdom there's no such thing as family peace union between man and a woman i love you i love you junk if you do not adopt this kingdom you will some people's head clash every day because their cultures are east and west what they say don't do in this culture is exactly what you need to do to be a good citizen when i talk of culture i don't just mean tradition i mean your way of life hallelujah are you getting my point now when i submit to the culture of the kingdom if this is my wife and i want to stand here and she wants to stand here we both of us look and say look we are fighting here where does the king want and the king said, two of you go back. We submit our personal wills to adopt that of the kingdom. This is the only basis where brothers can dwell together in unity. Are you getting my point now? Many of us are holding strong to devilish ideologies. Let me give you one. For instance, secular music and godly music. I'm hitting somebody now. Yes, I will say it again. Delete that junk from your phone. Don't let anybody let you know that Christians are... You know, we have these ugly mindsets about Christians that they are old school. They are the ones left behind. Just allow your foolishness to keep deceiving you. In the future, you will see how far we have gone. Hallelujah. A lot of people listen to all kinds of things. And we laugh and we are happy. Not knowing that music carries a spirit. Every song carries a spirit that writes upon your heart. Huh? When it writes upon your heart, it's like a spiritual slate. You begin to feed off that writing. That was the revelation that the devil was bringing to Jesus. Turn this stone into bread. There was something that was written on stone when Moses was on the mountain. He said, turn it to become bread. In other words, let that be your basis of living. And he said, no, man shall not live by this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many things that are militating us. So when we talk about this transformation, this transformation, you must align yourself. Ah, I refuse to talk about marriage this night. Please, I want peace. Is, is till next week. Come next week prepared. Somebody can be married for 50 years and be married wrongly, working with an ideology. He can write a wrong book. And I was, I was sharing with Pastor Alpha and his wife this afternoon. We're just having some time together. Someone can be married for 50, 60 years. That's why when you see an elder who loves God and fears God and has a great home, listen to him. Because he has two advantages, experience and the spirit of God. There are many people writing all kinds of books about marriage. Their personal experience has become the template for them to initiate other people. So they say certain things are not possible based on the limitations they faced. Not knowing that if they only aligned some more to the kingdom, some things would have become possible. Hallelujah. Say, I submit to the government of heaven. So, Ibo, how far are you willing to go with God? As far as submitting yourself to pick up the ideologies of the king is concerned. I don't just mean your culture in terms of village, the way you are behaving. It's generally believed that Igbo people like money and they can do everything for it. Don't laugh. That's a culture. When you come to the kingdom, what says the spirit to the church? What is the new ideology? Are you going to join that band of fruitless hustlers? I must make it. My share of the national cake. 
Although you are a Christian, you are born again, but it's limiting you. So you cannot honor the law of process. You cannot walk with the spirit accordingly. Hallelujah. Kogi people. Middle belters, all right, or northerners. There are strong ideologies that we have held as a territory. Are we willing to let some of these things go? When you are angry and you tell somebody, you will see. You now run and there's somebody stationed to deal with you and bring everything to justice. But the Bible says vengeance is mine. So you now have two kingdoms. Choose ye this day. I set before you. Hallelujah. It's believed that Yoruba people love education so much. And they can press for it. You need to have a degree, do this, go abroad, come back, do this and that. But to what degree are you willing to yield to the spirit so that you become a true spiritual man, not limited by intellect alone? Knowing that the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong. It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but the Lord that showeth mercy. He said, it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. But he gives unto his beloved sleep. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who is this one? Um, the northern man, the Hausa man. What are you willing to lay down? It's generally believed that northerners are, are not serious with their wives. They are less as fair and careless. The man's job is just to give birth and then allow the woman go to farm and suffer and do that. Don't just forget. We're going to talk about that next week. Praise God. See, you see, the thing about marriage is that marriage is the greatest example between our relationship and Christ and this enforcing the kingdom. That's why I keep jumping there. If Benga, ah, uh -uh, come, my brother. If this guy is going to marry um, Taiwo, brothers and sisters, except another kingdom superimposes them, there is war. Everybody shout war. War, war that will not end. You know that Anglican statement, war without end. Because there will be clash of values. Many of us go to God in prayer and we approach God with certain mindsets that are limiting God. And the Bible says they limited him in the wilderness by saying, can God. When you hear a word like in the name of Jesus, the hand of God will come upon your exams. Your mindset suddenly says, forget. If you read, you read. If you don't read, you will fail. Your mindset has become a limiting factor. You had the testimony of the, of the person who just checked the jam. I know many of you think it's a lie. If you are giving your way now, you say, let's verify this thing. Even that genotype thing, I'm not very sure. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. That's what you are saying. Say, forget Jare. Which doctor? Let's check. Let's go back. I must be there. Thomas was there. And he did the same thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see that all the disciples that Jesus walked with represented different ideologies. Peter was so impulsive. He was an extrovert. One moment, don't wash my feet. The other moment, bath me. Thomas, you know, all kinds of people. But all of them came into an alignment. Are you getting my point? Such that it didn't matter who entered any city. The Holy Ghost was comfortable to do the same thing. This is kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Say it upon your life. The kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. When the kingdom comes upon your finances, you stop running finances like heat and run. This nonsense people do around. You go to Abuja and see people running. Everybody's running. I, I was watching, I think it was NTA this afternoon and they were showing 
a good luck Jonathan I think they went for something campaign in equity state or this, and I saw all the people dancing on the road I said but do these people really love this country or is it that the hunger is too much they are muzzling the last ounce of energy to just dance it so that when the money comes they can negotiate after the the, the conference has the kingdom come over your finances or you are still running it the way you know go to school get a job hope to get a very great job wonderful but have you have you had the opinion of the king do you know there is an economic system in this kingdom that was there before you were born have you been interested in subscribing to it the bible said taste and see that the lord it didn't say wish and complain be serious how do you taste food you go and sit down in the restaurant you sit down for as long as the food is being prepared while he's preparing the table before you in the presence of your enemies you must sit down and then you will taste and testify and say that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled even that of the word of life that's what we preach has the kingdom come upon your soul to change your character brothers and sisters this is very important there are many christians without character you can walk out immediately after the grace and give one sister a dirty slap because you are entering bus you see forget the fact that i sat down in front of oh, you try me i wound you i'm not one of these guys that like looking for women don't think i like you look at this this guy just spent three hours rolling on the floor and worshiping now he wants to give a lady a slap the next time somebody does like that, tell him, thy kingdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. When somebody carries his mouth and you are lambasting somebody, a brother just comes and says, I like your shoe. No, 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 no. I'm not this kind of people. Let me tell you something. I'm not this kind of boy. Just say, brother, just say, thy kingdom. You need the influence of the kingdom. Have you allowed the kingdom to come upon your academics? Do you not know that the spirit of God came upon a man called Daniel? And changed him. Literally, he learned the art and the language of the Babylonians. And the Bible says he was distinguished. But every time they are talking, he said, me, I had one P, four C, I added Neko. It even allowed me and gave me two years to make it up. And you take that mindset. Have you allowed the kingdom to come? Please, is my message making sense tonight? In your body, you will keep dying of terminal disease until you allow the kingdom to come. So you are healed one moment from miracle service, but you now go back and this happens again. No, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. God is coming to you tonight and saying, How long are you willing to keep? remaining at this level you have a ministry god wants to take you to a high level but your limitation there is a message you had that has refused to allow the kingdom come and you keep wondering why is this thing not working and then out of frustration you just say anybody that is doing it is fake forget it all these people rejoice Rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. 
When it comes to you, he works upon your mind. When it comes to you, he changes your ideology. Don't tell me I'm from Edo State. Don't tell me I'm from Plateau State. Don't tell me I'm from Lagos. Are you willing to subscribe to the governing influence of the king? Three ways you enforce the kingdom. Very quickly, please sit down. Number one. Look at me. To enforce the kingdom, you must understand the mysteries of the kingdom. The principles that govern the operation of God's system. But it so happens that these mysteries are so many, our lifetime will not be able to... Follow me, please. I'm trying to construct the first... Um, the first way of enforcing the kingdom. The mysteries that govern the operation of the kingdom. Remember I showed you the creation before Genesis 1. Remember when we're talking about what? Laws of dominion or something. I told you there was a creation before Genesis 1. Is that true? And I showed you, isn't it? How that the foundations of the earth was created. That creation story was even more comprehensive than Genesis 1. That was when the foundations of the earth was laid upon pillars. Right? And I told you the sons of God is not a New Testament concept. It has been there. When the sons of God sang for joy. Are you getting my point now? So there are mysteries. The earth is not round. It's not suspended in the space. That's what science told us. But the Bible says it has pillars. The pillars extend to the sea. The Bible says God put doors at the borders of every river. That means every time we see flooding, a spirit manipulated a spiritual law because there are doors. Emmanuel. See, this is what you know that you won't be deceived. When people just say, water just came and washed the house, you say, uh-uh, come on now. I read in my Bible, there are doors. He put boundaries. But by the manipulation of spiritual laws, you can extend their boundaries. I told you, a man can be accurate but not be of God. Spiritual laws are ne not necessarily heavenly laws. In the kingdom, laws can be initiated by any spirit. Any demon spirit, human spirit. That's why a herbalist can concoct something for you and it will work. Because he's manipulating the laws of the spirit. But for kingdom citizens, that law must be initiated, sustained by the spirit of the Christ. That's what makes it of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? You can go to somebody by the riverside right now. The person will buff out all your problems. And truly, you'll find out that your problems left. Because he manipulated a law. But it so happens that if the spirit of God is not the one who initiated the process, there will still be a window left. Only the spirit of God knows the mystery to the final door of evil. Every other person will leave a signature that shows. So you can look at somebody's visitation of a man of God or of somebody and know that it's not God this person met. There was still a window. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying tonight? Oh, I wish I had time. This gives you spiritual intelligence. I remember um, where I did my secondary school, they had, they, they understood the art and science of holy rain. It would never rain on their market day. That was the source of their livelihood. They had enchanters who could look and know which law can keep the cloud suspended. And then in the night around two, no wind, no nothing. A heavy rain will now come. What's the compensation? There is something, of course. Remember the law of exchange. There is always a compensation. Don't let anybody fool you. You don't get nothing for nothing in the kingdom. That thing is not true. If you got it free, somebody paid for it. There is always an exchange. Always. So the next time you hear that there is flooding around, don't join ignorant people to just say, wow, the climate is changing. No. No. These spirits are invoking a spiritual formula that extends the borders of the rivers. But when the kingdom citizens show up, like Joshua, 
we have mastered the mysteries of the kingdom and we can look at the rod of Pharaoh and drop the rod of God and it will swallow it right in their presence and not increase weight. And we tell the sorcerers, explain the mystery of swallowing two snakes and not increasing in size. Where did they go to? You answer mysteries with mysteries. See, let me tell you, in the days that will come, it will be a clash of mantles. Men will talk very little. Something else will be speaking. That which God trained them with is what they will use. Hmm. That's what can make people hire you and keep you in a walk. They just say you are you are part of the board of advisors. You are not doing anything. Your presence is forcing mysteries to work in the favor of that company. And they say, oh God, you are part of the board of directors. For what? Oh, they will need us. Goodness, we are a city set on a hill. Trust me. Trust me. Bishop used to work with a man. I won't mention his name because people are listening. Bishop Stan used to work with a man. As graduates, he paid them 50000 but he paid the men of God that came to work with him 1.2. You know why? Because they have mastered the art and science of manipulating spiritual laws. Sorcerers and diviners in Bible days were not elected. They were the closest people to the king because if they leave him, you would die. They leave all the farmers and intelligent people to be killing themselves outside. And those who understand the art and science of controlling this realm. Hmm. And Job said, has thou commanded thy mourning? How do you command your mourning? Brothers and sisters, when you know what you can know, it will... Ay. Grant us grace. This is what the patriarchs knew that made them sons of God. Twelve men in the Old Testament. It has always been twelve. It's the system of God's government. Twelve men who manifested bodily the summation of mysteries that made them afraid. And Elijah the Tishbite showed up from wherever nobody knows. And how he got to the mountain, the Bible doesn't tell us. You think that man would just keep climbing the mountain like that? We just know he sat down at the top of the mountain. And the armies came with their spears. He said, really? They've trained you in the art of war. Those guys were so excellent. They could, they could, diverge, they could diverge arrows with slings. They were so accurate. But Elijah said, I don't have time for this business. Let fire come from heaven the disciples saw jesus do a lot of mystery that's why one day they said jesus let's come out fire jesus didn't say you cannot do it he said do you not know what spirit you are of in other words i'm showing you other mysteries you see what jesus kept teaching them he didn't finish the lecture that's why after resurrection he kept them for 50 days 40 days and he was teaching them the matters of the kingdom after that he said goodbye i can leave you now goodness and we, one man called Bad Jesus meandered. Have you heard the story? Bad what? Bad Jesus. Paul said, ah! In Acts chapter 16, I think it was 16 or 19, when they saw a lady with the spirit of divination bringing a lot of money to all their people by giving people word of knowledge. So you see that it worked, right? For whatever reason, a spirit entered that lady and trained her in the art of interpreting spiritual things. When Paul looked, Paul could not see, but he used another mystery that opened his eyes. And he said, uh-uh, this is not of God. May God make strong men out of us. Not just by impartation, but by knowledge. You will walk everywhere and read the handwritings on the wall. That what men are not seeing, you will see. You will enter your house and somebody will say, I have stomach ache. And you say, no, I need to fast. This is not about stomach ache. I have connected the dots. This is is the dart of evil and you come out after 24 hours and say it's well ah, ah. somebody just says i have another stomach if you say it's well i know what i saw three days later the family opens up to unspeakable breakthrough you think they want you to come back home there are some of you they don't want you to come back home because you are you are adding to the the mysteries you are not solving it why is it that when you come back home things finish unusually 
Whereas the prophet showed up and said, surely the, the oil will not finish. This and that will not finish. We're going to pray shortly. Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is on the strength of the mysteries of the kingdom that you understand. He said it has been given unto you to know. See, when Adam was created, some things were told Adam that Eve did not know. That's why God held Adam responsible. Before Eve showed up, some informations were given Adam. For instance, part of the things that were taught, I believe with all my heart, was God gave him a story of the creation. God told him a lot of things. He knew that water was responsible for abundance. I hope you know. We've shared it here, right? That the things that came out, they came out from the water. The Bible tells us the birds of the air, the fish, they all came out from the water. This is another mystery. That's why the Bible says there are three that bear witness in heaven. The spirit, the word, and what? No, it can't be water in heaven. But it said in the earth realm, there are three that bear witness. So the spirit bears witness both in heaven and in the earth. The common factor, both in heaven and in the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And I told you this represents three dispensations of the manifestation of the church, right? The, the dispensation of the spirit was the charismatic age from the Azusa street and all of that. So people laid emphasis on the manifestation and the workings of the spirit. And then the word of faith started coming. That's the dimension of the water. They started teaching people accurately the things of the word. And before Christ comes, the manifestation of the blood. Not as a teaching, as a lifestyle. Because the blood represents the very life of God. That's what will open the gates. Hmm. So gates that were shut will be opened. Because of certain mysteries. Brothers and sisters. The kingdom of God. Seeks to find expression in your life. But because there are so many mysteries for us to learn. We can only touch so much. Listen to me. There are so many. It will take us a lifetime. So the Holy Spirit identified it as a predicament in us. And he said. There is another mystery. That will help you connect to principles that you do not know. But they will work for you. And then the Bible starts saying, for we know not how to pray. He said, this is the limitation. Are you hearing me now? Follow me, please. He said, no man knows the heart of a man save the spirit of that man. So no man knows the heart of God save the spirit of God. And then he begins to communicate a limitation that every believer, no matter how strong, we have that limitation. What's the limitation? We know not what to pray for as we ought to. That means we don't know how to use the correct spiritual laws to the accuracy that will give us all the results that we need. But there was a technology that was kept to help our inadequacy. He said, but the spirit itself make it what? This is a mystery. Make it intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Aha. Uh -huh. So when you begin to pray, this mystery was not taught Satan. This is what confuses demons. I hope you know Satan, Lucifer. I told us already, Lucifer was what? Light bearer. He was the custodian of the revelations. He thought he saw everything about God. He did not know that there were other mysteries that were hidden. So he deceived the one third of the angels. He said, guys, just follow me. I can tell you, I have every knowledge of God in my hands. I can even be God right now and it will not change the system of heaven. And God said, really? There was war in heaven. God didn't even stand up from his throne. It was Michael. Michael fought him. So when he came down, he came down, he became lower than the cherubs and all of that. Then, that's why he looked for Adam. I told you the first person who was in the Garden of Eden was who? Lucifer, not Adam. Lucifer was the first person in the Garden of Eden. He was driven out. That's why when Adam came, it got him angry. You see what Satan has with men. So when he collected the Adamic authority, at that point, he became greater than all the angels. Second to only the Trinity. That was why when Archangel Michael came and they were fighting over the body of Moses. Are you, are you seeing it now? Because at that point he was higher than him. He could not use that strength again. So he invoked a higher power. The Lord rebuke you.
Hold on. Are you, are you getting my point now? Mm. When Jesus was born, because Satan was working with Adamic authority, even Jesus ran away for his life. Otherwise, Satan would have killed him. When Satan took Jesus to the mountain, Jesus did not say, Satan, go away. No, he followed him. And Satan said, all these glories. What mountain did they climb that they saw the glories of the world all at once? Is that not a mystery? Where do you stand in the earth that you see all the glories? But he showed him at once. He said, it has been given to me. Ah, yeah. And so he said, let me give you the shortcut. Why go and die and do all of this nonsense? Because he knew that there is coming another law. He had seen water. It was the water that parted the Red Sea and brought separation between Egypt and Israel. It was the adumbration of baptism. But he saw an adumbration of the blood of the Lamb in Egypt. And because he knows that prophetic things must have a physical explanation, he started following anything that looks like blood. So he said, Jesus, this one that you have come now, why just bow down to me and collect this thing? Jesus said, no problem. I will collect it anyway. So when he met with it in hell, he said, I've come to collect it now. See? See, Jesus defeated Satan without the help of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit had left him. He was in hell. Are you getting me? That was why after the third day, the same spirit that raised him back. That means he came back on the third day, raised by the spirit of God. And when Satan, Jesus collected the keys, stripped Satan of it. That's why in Revelation he said, I am he that was dead, but now I am alive and I hold the keys. He's got it back. That's what he gave us in redemption. Seven blessings. What is the lamb who was slain to receive? He has received unto us blessings, riches, those seven things. He gave it to us. He said, as my father has sent me, I send you with it. But he said, hold on. Don't just run foolishly. The Holy Ghost. There are many things I want to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. They will be needed for you to be effective. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? He will guide you. He will teach you the other part of the lessons. Thy kingdom come. So when you begin to pray, that's the first way of enforcing the kingdom. As I begin to pray in the spirit, there are all kinds of codes and mysteries being manipulated in the spirit for my favor. So you can pray. Listen, I shared a revelation with Pastor Alpha and his wife this afternoon. When you pray, I hope you know you are sowing seeds. Is that true? And the Bible says, to every seed, God can change the body and give it another body. So I can be praying and all of a sudden it will manifest in my finances. God has given it another body. I can pray in tongues and it will manifest in my health. Are you getting me? God can give seeds another body. Are you seeing why it's important to pray in the spirit? For we have a limitation. We know not what we should pray for. Brothers and sisters, hear me here. If you are not baptized with the Holy Ghost, with evidence of praying in fluent tongues, fluent tongues, you need to have a meeting with the prayer band people. Hallelujah. Fluent tongues. It's your lifeline out of this nonsense. This assault of the devil. They will manipulate your life with spiritual principles. I know a lot of people have thought that everything is okay once you are born again. Wait on. See, the laws of the spirit are not the laws of the Old Testament. They predate creation. Hallelujah. It was that same law that brought water for Hagar in the desert. She looked around and there was no water. And when the angel appeared, he opened her eyes. And there was water flowing. That means what you do not see does not mean it's not there. Something can happen in the spirit and make it manifest. There was water. She could not drink because she could not see it. What did the angel do to her eyes? The same thing Elisha did to his servant. Hallelujah. Prayer. Number two. You enforce the kingdom. You enforce 
the kingdom in the place of deep worship. Very few people understand worship. Please, if you are here and you've not cultivated the life of worship, you can meet the worship team members after the service and say, how do I cultivate a life of worship? Not an event of cult of worship that you hold might. A life of worship. Just like we did. That's why when we came, the Holy Ghost allowed us to bask in that presence. When that thing happens, the presence of God can enforce the reality of the kingdom. Hallelujah. One more. You enforce the kingdom by the ministry of the word. Both studying it and speaking it. Not just blind religious speaking. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. That kind of speaking that doesn't carry any weight. But that you say, I am blessed. Out of a depth of conviction, you enforce the kingdom. Son of man, what seest thou? Ezekiel 37. Or Ezekiel 37. Son of man, can these bones live again? He said, only thou knowest. He said, enforce it. I prophesied as I was commanded. And the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Wish so. That means let the healed of the Lord say what? Let the prosperous of the Lord do what? So you say so. Comes from the word homologio. Repeat after the person you just had. And so you speak. My life is blessed. I'm a man of character. I'm a woman of character. You are enforcing the kingdom. I have no business with sickness. Hallelujah. My path is as a shining light. Even when you see things that contradict your faith, you know that there is a reality higher than what you have seen. And you enforce it with your words. We are going to pray. I have to stop here. Were you blessed tonight? Did you get something? We are going to pray. In a few minutes we are going to pray. We will just take two or three minutes and pray very generously in tongues. Hallelujah. After that, we'll make decrees and then we'll round up the service. Please rise up on your feet, everyone. Please hold hands together, everyone, if you can, and begin to pray in tongues. Activate the operation of mysteries. Zombran Jebaladababash Kapra Baba Basata Baladaba Depretekatebabababo Soto Protoko Baladaba Pray brothers and sisters Now you understand That praying in tongues helps you To enforce the kingdom The culture The influence Repakata Preketetete Baba Change your life into the Garden of Eden. Change your wilderness into the Garden of Eden. It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Change your destiny. Change your life. Give the Holy Ghost an opportunity to move your life forward. Reporto pres que bondo se que te e que te le que te recorto pros que ba 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 ba. Hallelujah. Whenever you feel confused in your life, pray in tongues. Your situation is at the mercy 
of mysteries being activated there is what can be activated that suddenly makes everything possible gravity works but there is another law called the law of aerodynamics there is a principle that can compel gravity to give way hallelujah hallelujah now please leave yourselves the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so in the next two minutes i want you to open your mouth prophesy over your life and your destiny come on now speak the word of god i'm the blessed of the lord my body aligns to spiritual things my mind aligns to spiritual things in the name of the lord jesus my eyes are open to see and understand the mysteries of the spirit grace and peace is multiplied unto me by knowledge grace and peace prophesy koinonia grace and peace grace and peace is multiplied don't keep quiet don't keep quiet when you keep quiet you stop the kingdom from being enforced in your life i am blessed i'm fruitful all the way in the name of the lord jesus the lines are falling for me in pleasant places i have a goodly heritage the favor of the lord compasses me as with a shield the earth yields its increase for me i'm blessed with the oil of gladness above my fellow my eyes are open open your mouth and pray if your neighbor is not praying tell the person speak death and life are in the power of the tongue death and life are in the power of the tongue i'm rising higher and higher by the power of the holy ghost higher and higher i break limits i'm prosperous i'm anointed in ever increasing dimensions the hand of god is upon me the favor of god is upon me i belong to a kingdom of power my words carry power i am a blessing everywhere i go the hand of god is upon me the favor of god is upon my life i'm strengthening my inner man i'm a man of power i'm a man of wisdom the wisdom of the spirit is at work in me i hear the voice of the spirit telling me this is the way walk ye in it and i find rest for my soul in the name of jesus christ every mountain becomes a plain ground before me in the name of jesus christ the lord makes a way for me where there seems to be no way where men say there is a casting down my testimony is that there is a lifting up there's no sickness in my body because i dwell in zion and no inhabitant of zion shall say i am sick the spirit that raised christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body and it quickens my mortal body my mind is renewed my body is mortified never an instrument of unrighteousness it has been given unto me to know the mysteries of the kingdom i understand the mysteries of dominion i have ears that hear i have eyes that see hallelujah hallelujah two prayer points and we'll round up hallelujah number one you're going to say lord everything in my life that contends with the culture of the kingdom tonight let your kingdom come let your kingdom come every mindset keeping me in poverty every mindset making me a failure every mindset destroying the anointing in my life 
tonight thy kingdom come pray your kingdom come upon my mind your kingdom come upon my finances your kingdom come upon my ideologies I lay down mindsets African mindsets cultural mindsets diabolic mindsets anti-craft anti-christ mindsets mindsets that fight the workings of the spirit mindsets that fight new levels of the anointing lay it down tonight and pray there is a higher realm in the spirit there is a level of excellence there is a level of quintessence there is a level of perfection pray mindsets we got from churches and denominations mindsets we got from our upbringing mindsets we got from our territories and traditions lord every mindset that is a stronghold limiting the operation of the spirit in my life tonight i cast down imaginations and every yatar every imagination and high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of christ hallelujah 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 one last prayer you're going to say lord there is always something i can do that will open me up to what looks impossible to me now open my eyes listen there is something just one thing he said one thing is needful not many things he said matter matter you are worried and upset about many things but there is one thing that can change your level one revelation to change your finances one revelation one uncovering of the mystery and you enter another level of the anointing lift your voice and say lord where is it give me the eyes of an eagle show me oh god i want my life to move forward pray this has been my prayer pray open my eyes show me one more mystery that controls the next dimension of power the next dimension of grace the next dimension of prosperity and wisdom show me oh god he said call on to me and i will answer i will show you i will show you not just tell you but show you show me what i need to see show me what i need to see oh god hallelujah we are still going to pray that prayer point because many of you are just standing to see listen brothers and sisters isaiah remained where he was are you hearing what i'm saying until the day he saw something higher in the year that king uzziah died i isaiah i saw something higher than what i had seen hallelujah there is something that you can see when saul saw the prophet something happened to his destiny what do you need to see to change your life brothers and sisters i'm convinced it does not take time it just takes revelation pray and say lord open my eyes for the sake of my family oh god what do we need to see to come out of this hardship show us oh god the secrets of the kingdom show us oh god 
the mystery of increase what is stopping marriages in my family show me something i can see oh god give me a higher revelation for the sake of my generation let my eyes see something hallelujah Bishop David Oyedeko saw something and he said, I can never. Every level of result you see is because a man saw a dimension of God. There is something you must see to live where you are. Otherwise, you will remain there forever. There is nothing called impossible in the spirit. It just depends on what you have not seen or what you have seen. Hallelujah. May I invite all those worshiping with us for the first time? I see a number of people. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, please everyone remain standing. We're out of time. I'd like you to quickly just come out here. We want to bless you and speak and prophesy into your life. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia, as they come. Please don't sit back. Thank you. There are people coming from different states, different places, different locations. We love you. We honor you. We celebrate you. God bless you. You will never go back the same. Something always happens when you come. Always. Always. There is an influence of the spirit that brought you. It's called anakazo. It's the compelling power of the spirit. hallelujah thank you so much for coming we honor you celebrate all of you especially for those of you who have come outside of zaria honestly we truly truly bless and honor you for taking our time this is koinonia we're here every friday god is doing great things in our midst you'll never be the same we have a prayer and a prophecy for you we are anointed when we bless you you are truly blessed Hallelujah. Stretch your hands, saints of God. You are ambassadors. Prophesy. Enforce the kingdom. You are the ecclesia of God. Enforce the kingdom upon them. We bless you with the blessings of the heavens. We bless you with a hunger for spiritual things. We bless you with a passion for the things of the spirit. We bless you with the spirit of revelation. Insight into the mysteries of the kingdom. We bless you with the excellence of the King. We anoint your ears and your eyes to hear and see. We command that you are strong in the spirit. Whatever challenge you came here with, we command that it leaves you once and for all. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.